Aloha and welcome to this module on user interface design. And in this module we're going to use Twitter Bootstrap, Bootstrap and DivShot. This is without a doubt one of the most, if, if not the most important module of the semester, I think. And that's because user interface design is really at the crux of creating a successful application. If you don't have a good user interface, then almost no matter what you do, your efforts will be in vain. People won't be able to use your system. So the good news is this is a really important module. The bad news is I'm just not going to teach you that much about the higher level concepts of user interface design. That is at least a one semester course, if not even a degree program. Um, and you know we've got such little time now that, and I've got so many topics to cover, that instead of kind of trying to explain the, the high level concepts of user interface design, what we're going to start off by doing is just teaching you a couple of tools. And the reason why I'm taking this approach is that if you select the right tools, there's certain kinds of user interface design mistakes that you can't make because you're using a framework which avoids those mistakes. So that's, that's what I'm going to do here. And we're going to use two very modern, very high profile um, tools for this. So at least I'm, I'm a little embarrassed by the minimal amount of information I'm going to give you about effective user interface design, but I'm going to I feel a little bit better because you are going to use some super cool technology. So user interface design, it's as complicated as programming. It's a discipline all in, in and of itself. Um, and you know I just want you to understand the complexities and I don't expect your UIs initially to be you know super awesome if you want to get into it you're going to just have to spend years literally learning the the techniques so we're not going to focus really on the high level design issues in the time we have I'm going to focus purely on mechanics hopefully um, you know that will enable you to build a lot of user interfaces relatively quickly and then get feedback on them and incrementally improve them Typically, when you're doing user interface design, there's two parts. The first part is you just create mockups of the pages and get feedback on those, um, iterate through that for a while, and then once you feel confident that the pages in your application are appropriate, um, and you do that through focus groups or you know um, user interface sessions, there's lots of different ways you can do that. Then you implement the design. In the case of the Play Framework, that means actually connecting, you know, building the views. But we're not going to do that this week, actually. Now, the old way that you did the mock-up part of the process was by creating a wireframe. And here's an example, Balsamic Mockups. It's a very popular mock-up system. And you basically get a, you know, kind of a canvas and you lay stuff out on it and it looks really funky and uses the Comic Sans font. But enables you to focus on, the, you know, what are the components and, and where are they and what is the functionality of, of, of the site without really having to get into the details of HTML, CSS, and so forth. So you can kind of put off those issues. Um, and that, this was the recommended way, in, in my opinion, until very recently and just in the past, you know, few months actually, we've had kind of the arrival of some technologies which I think are going to eventually, uh, quite quickly, render this approach obsolete. And these uh, technologies are basically cloud-based uh, mock-up or, or interface design systems based upon a high-level framework, in our case Twitter Bootstrap, which enable you to get almost all of the way, all of, enable almost all of the benefits of these wireframing uh, modules, but produce actual well-structured HTML, CSS, CSS code, which you can import directly into your application and use to, to build. So, you know, there's this huge uh, step when you when you get to this mock-up done now you got to figure out what's the HTML and CSS is to actually implement it that takes you a long while with this you're actually you know building the the uh, HTML and CSS as you go and you're and but yet you're using this kind of WYSIWYG interface so it's it's pretty cool um, so 
what you're going to need to learn in this module, it's, it's going to be quite complicated depending upon your background in, in web technologies. Um, hopefully all of you are fairly familiar with HTML, CSS, um, and even in fact less might be some uh, uh, more advanced user interface um, technologies that you're going to have to learn. I don't even have any links to those in, in this module because I'm assuming you'll just kind of have to pick that up as you, as you need it. Then there's the Twitter Bootstrap framework. This is arguably the most popular or most high profile current web, web user interface uh, framework that's out there. I have a bunch of links that you can use to learn more, including a pretty good 20 minute um, YouTube video by a guy uh, about that. And then, um, in addition, you need to learn the div shot, um, or you could pick Jetstrap, which is a kind of a similar one, very similar. I'm going to use div shot in, in this tutorial to actually provide a WYSIWYG layout, you know, design environment for Twitter Bootstrap. Now what I've got in the bottom in parentheses is another thing you need to learn is how to create usable and effective user interfaces. I'm putting that in parentheses because I'm not going to explicitly uh, go into that this semester. Um, instead, my goal is to just get you comfortable using these tools and your, your user interfaces will be far and ahead, you know, much further along just by virtue of the fact that you use these tools. But there, it doesn't prevent you from making um, various kinds of errors and those we'll just have to deal with as, as you uh, run into them. Okay, so now let's switch to the demo. And uh, here we are using the div shot. I've, I've logged in and basically I've created some pages. So I'll go to the home page here. And um, this again is the warehouse management system that we've been looking at all semester. I created a little um, little sample home page and what is perhaps the most important reason to use one of these systems or what makes them so compelling and awesome is the fact that you've got a the display of the um, the page and the code okay and they are synced in real time so for example one thing I could do is I can drag, I can, t over here there's kind of our palette of things. So I could say here's a heading like an H2 and I can drag that into this center space here. And then I can use this pull down component say H3 and I can say, you know, uh, I can double, triple click on this and I can say um, uh, our system is easy to use. Now you've been probably, hopefully noticed that there is code down here that as I type up here is being updated. So easy to use and simple. Okay, But we can also go down here and edit the code directly and you can see in real time we are um, uh, the, the, the rendered version of this code is being updated. That's what makes this so cool and, and effective and efficient is that you can kind of decide at any given moment in time whether the fastest thing for you to do is just edit the code directly or use this WYSIWYG drag and drop base component where you can you know double click on stuff and and make things happen okay so I, I really love that aspect about it um, and you can see and and basically down here it's you know the framework is bootstrap that's the default framework so when you output the code when you save the code which is done by this export code button up here then um, it will download the the code that imp imports the bootstrap framework files for you <coughs> okay so just to kind of give you a sense for what this looks like if we go to the code we have this nav bar at the top Okay, if I click here, you can see that it shows you actually uh, highlights, you know, the line of code ref, uh, corresponding to the item. And then also you've got this little um, uh, kind of um, breadcrumb type thing up here that shows you, you know, basically all of the different CSS classes that, um, that are um, influencing the rendering of this particular thing. You can see, we've, you know, if we click here, this is a link item. For this uh, link item, we can see that it's active. If we, um, so, so basically what I'm trying to say is for each component, when you select it, 
you get an inspector over here that in, that provides options for what you can do with it. Okay, for this hero unit, you can't do anything, but for this um, link item, you can basically decide whether the link um, should be active or not, um, whether it's an internal reference, you can type that in there, you can add CSS classes to it, add an ID, you know, and if for any th things like that, we decide that's the, you know, the ID warehouse ID, you can see all down here, I've suddenly, so I've added this here, but now what we've got is the corresponding HTML updated. Okay, so just examples of the, of the kinds of things you can do. And this HTML is all very nicely highlighted. One of the things that, uh, that I've discovered is sometimes when you're adding stuff in here, the formatting gets a little weird. So you can basically, um, get, to get it to reformat, you can hide the code window and then click these angle brackets to get it redisplayed and then it will reformat everything correctly. Okay, so I'll go to another page that I've created called the warehouse page. And what you can see here is uh, I've, I've basically cloned the home page and so that I got this nav bar here. And then I um, you know, went up here and made unselected the active button and then went to this one and clicked active. So now it kind of visually indicates that we're at the warehouses page. And um, if I scroll down in the content here, I've got a container. That's one of the things you want to use generally as your outside class for uh, Twitter bootstrap files. And then we've got this well container inside and that creates this little um, highlighted aspect. And then I've got this scrolling table um, that, uh, you know, enable if you're, if you're displaying a lot of things, it will actually, you know, create a, a uh, scrollable window there. And then you've got your typical table kind of thing. And you can see that my, I've got these buttons that are there. And for a given button, Twitter Bootstrap has these various styles which change the color of the button. So in this case, delete is always going to be danger. Edit is going to be yellow. And then submit uh, is going to be primary. Okay. Um, and so on. So down here, I, you know, I have these span fours. Okay. So Twitter Bootstrap is based upon a 12 column grid. And so I've got these three areas here and you can see down in the, um, in my code, these are implemented this way. So I haven't decided probably nothing will go in here and I could just, you know, if I wanted to, I could just delete this entirely like this. It's a very, you know, so for example, if I wanted to delete that guy, I could just go select the thing and press delete and it goes away like that. Um, and now you can see there's only two of them. And if I wanted to add it back in, I could, you know, do something like that. And now it's back again. Um, and if I wanted to put something in there, like a paragraph or a heading or whatever, you can see I could just drag it over or I could type it in manually. However you want to do it. There's a lot of different approaches and you'll just have to find what, you know, works the best for you. There's also, in addition to the HTML pane, there's a CSS pane where you can define your own CSS classes, which get... Um, you know, combined in, and uh, that allows you to customize kind of the, the look and feel a little bit. There's also a JavaScript one if you want to add your own JavaScript. Um, so it's all, you know, it's pretty amazing. And I've been playing with it for about a week now, and um, I certainly don't understand everything that you need to know to use it really effectively. So there is definitely a learning curve. What I would suggest for you right now is to just try to use it, uh, just play with it, spend the time with it, build simple things, um, and see, you know, see how far you can get. Okay. Um, so for example, another page that I made is the stock items page. And here I had a little well at the top saying search for stock items. So if we go up here, you can see I cloned the other page and then I inserted a new container that has an embedded well inside it that creates another little well that's indented about the same as the other ones. And then I've got an inline form where I've got this text and then the input button here. And then the notion is, is that when you search for some kind of product name with some string, then the matching product names are going to end up in this um, window down here. And then there's always, if you wanted to add a new product, or excuse me, add a new stock item, you can always define that there. Okay, so this is a pretty simple interface. There's a lot of more complicated interfaces you could build. 
um, that use JavaScript and pop-ups and, and all that kind of stuff. And that's certainly a place you can get to, but what I recommend initially is to just build simple things, build a simple interface. And um, in the next module, next week, what we'll do is we'll show how you can connect this to the Play framework. So once you've got all the HTML code written, um, what you do is you can click this button and then do download project zip and uh, you'll have a zip file on your computer that you that then contains all the code and you can uh, import into your play framework module and go from there. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this little overview of DivShot, Twitter Bootstrap and user interface development. Um, lots of time required to make this you know, get, get used to this and comfortable with this, but I think it'll be well worth it. If you get really good at this um, and you go into startup weekends or hackathons, I think you're going to have a big advantage over the competition because you'll be able to build a very nice looking user interface, uh, you know, just about as fast as you can imagine what it should look like.